Good morning. Yesterday may have been the first day of spring, but winter is back. Welcome back to Wishwell Farms, everybody. Today we're gonna to be mixing hydroponic tomato fertilizer. So the first thing we're gonna do is fill these two fertilizer tanks with hot water. It doesn't have to be really hot, but lukewarm is definitely better than cold water for dissolving the fertilizers completely. So I removed my hose from this spigot and I have it connected right here. I'm gonna turn this off. So if my pump turns on, it's not gonna fill the tank with hot water. So we're kind of bypassing the blue tank. I'm gonna turn this on. And then this valve here is going to shut off the cold water. So now we only have hot water being put into this tank. So we're gonna get about 15 gallons into each tank and then start mixing. We're going to weigh out our fertilizer on this scales. We'll put this blue bucket here tear off the weight. There we are. Now we're ready for weighing the fertilizers. So I store all my fertilizer back here in this little storage room connected to the greenhouse. This is all the fertilizers I need for an entire growing season. All right, this is my tomato recipe from 2021. It has not changed since 2021. I do get my water tested about every other year to see if there needs to be any changes. Um, I had it checked last year and there was no changes needed for the recipe. So we're sticking with the same recipe for 2024. We have a normal and a boosted. We're still gonna be using the normal because we don't wanna start the boosted until the second fruit cluster has formed. And if we look out here, we can see the first fruit cluster has formed. The second one is just in the flower stage being pollinated currently. So we have some decent looking tomatoes out here. This is the mixer I will be using. Just a simple paint mixer or drywall mixer, I'm not sure. But the guy I bought the greenhouse from gave that to me and I just hook it on my cordless drill. As you can see, the irrigation cycle is running currently and the billow pumps are proportioning the fertilizer and acid into the blue mixing tank. But since I'm getting ready to mix a new batch, I have these siphoning sticks out of the tanks and in here. So that's why you just see straight water being sucked in right now. That way we don't draw air into these lines. All right, we got plenty of hot water. Let's get that turned off. So I got my blue bucket here on the scales. We have the bucket teared already down to zero. And the first fertilizer we're gonna be weighing out is calcium nitrate. Got a brand new bag here, so I need to get it opened up. So in the non-boosted program, we need 22 and a half pounds of calcium nitrate. Tank number one gets calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate, and iron chelate. So we dump in our calcium nitrate. Get it mixed up a little bit. Now we need seven pounds of potassium nitrate. There we go. Get a little mix. Now we can turn the cold well water back on to start filling this tank. The only thing left for tank one is the iron chelate. Now before I start putting fertilizer in tank two, I wanna make sure I have any calcium nitrate that was left over in this bucket rinsed out. You can see how it's sticking to some of the, the walls of the blue bucket. So just put a little water in here. The reason we want that all out is because we don't want any calcium nitrate in tank two. 
it can form a precipitate with some of the other fertilizers that will be mixed in here. So uh, we just want to make sure we're starting with a clean bucket. Final item in tank one is iron chelate. It doesn't take very much. Um, it's like point. Let's look at the recipe real quick here. Iron chelate, 7.25 ounces. And I've measured this out on a smaller scale in the past, and it's about two-thirds of this uh, two-cup container. Oh, I spilled some. So there's our iron chelate going into tank one. So all the fertilizers have been put into tank one. We'll give it a final mix here. And now we just need to fill it up to 50 gallons and tank one will be complete. Now we can work on tank two. All right, for tank two, we have magnesium sulfate, potassium sulfate, potassium nitrate, and monopotassium phosphate. And then also a micro mix solution that is a liquid that I'll show you here in a second. So here's our four items that will go into tank two. First on the list, we're going to put in the potassium sulfate, also known as sulfur of potash. And this one is the largest amount. It looks like uh, 15 pounds, 14 ounces. So just shy of 16 pounds. So we'll call it 15.8 uh, sulfur of potash. Yep. And to tank two, give it a little tap. Now, I don't want to put any of this residue dripping off of this mixer into tank two. So I'll dip it in here in the fresh water, make sure it's clean. Then we'll come over here and mix up some of this uh, sulfur of potash. Now, sulfur of potash does leave a little residue behind after, this tanks, after these tanks are emptied. It seems like there's always a little bit left in the bottom. It doesn't fully dissolve. Um, one thing that Crop King told me that would help with that is adding maybe a quart of sulfuric acid to this tank. So I will throw in a pint to a quart of sulfuric acid, uh, the 35% uh, sulfuric acid into this tank to help dissolve some of that sulfur of potash. Now the other items, they completely dissolve and I've never had a problem with any of them leaving a residue behind. All right, next on the list, potassium nitrate, which is the exact same amount in tank one and tank two. So we're looking at seven pounds, 0.5 ounces. So it's basically just seven pounds. I'll put 7.1 in. Oh, you can see this needs to tear it again because there's a little bit of sticking to the side walls of the bucket. And that'll all get washed out and put into tank two. There we go, back to zero. And you 7.1 pounds. Or 0.2, I guess. Close enough. Give it a little mix. Okay, next on the list, magnesium sulfate, 13.5 ounces. Now in the boosted program, it's seven pounds, four ounces. So that is the, the biggest change other than the calcium nitrate from the normal plan to the boosted plan or recipe. So not even one pound, but we're gonna kind of split the difference this time since these are so close to needing the boosted program. So I'm gonna actually put in three pounds. So seven is for the boosted, three-fourths of a pound for the normal recipe. So, like I said, let's split the difference this time and do three pounds. A little too much. There we go. Looks like it's dissolving nicely. And finally, monopotassium phosphate. 
This does not change from the normal recipe to the boosted recipe. Nine pounds, two ounces. Close enough. All right, now that all the dry fertilizers have been added, we need to put the liquid micro mix in. I keep that in this five gallon container. So of the micro mix, we need one gallon. Let's give it a little shake because it does kind of settle out in the bottom. Give it a good shake here. One gallon would be two of these containers. All right, all the fertilizer solutions have been added to both tanks. Now we just need to get them both filled to 50 gallons. I'll mix it one more time, and then it will be good to go for another week. This is something that has to be done weekly. If I was just feeding this one greenhouse, it might last almost three weeks. But uh, I am feeding this greenhouse and three others. So it'll eat through this stuff pretty quickly. So. In the summertime, when they're really getting a lot of feed and a lot of water, about every six days, I gotta go through this process and mix up all these fertilizers and the sulfuric acid. Now, we don't need to mix up the acid today because I just did it the other day and we still have 15 gallons left. Um, I will show that in another video, exactly how we're mixing our acid. And it's gonna be a little different this year for me. I got a little experiment or a, to figure out the new titration curve. So I've been using 35% sulfuric acid for over 20 years. This is the sulfuric acid that you could get from auto parts stores. However, it is no longer available. You cannot get boxes of acid at auto parts stores any longer. So I've, I had to buy a different concentrate, which is, it's called 66 degree acid, maybe 60 degree, I forget, but it's like 93% strength sulfuric acid in these 15 gallon drums. So this year I will be using this to siphon out the acid needed to uh, acidify my water. Now, this is where the kind of the experiment comes in that I have to kind of determine how much of this to use because since this is 93% strength compared to 35%, it's gonna take far less acid to acidify my water. And the way the titration curve works, um, it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error to figure this all out. And I can easily fry my plants if I mess up. So stay tuned for that video. That will definitely be coming up. Let me know down in the comments what you guys use to acidify your water. Um, I know you can use nitric acid, citric acid, but those are more expensive and they can also um, alter the, the recipe a little bit of what your plants need. So I've always been told that sulfuric acid is the cheapest and easiest way to acidify your water. All right, I got my 50 gallons in tank one. Just doing a final mix here. Make sure there's no fertilizer that is undissolved. Stuck around the outside. You know, I'll run my mixer around the outside of the tank. Everything looks good. Finally, we just put our uh, siphon tube back in there. And we'll put the lid back on and that tank is done and ready to go for another week. Looks like everything is dissolved well. Add the uh, suction siphon tube. Put the lids back on. Now they are good to go. Well, we're pretty much finished up here. I'm just gonna flip on the billow pumps to make sure everything is coming out the way it's supposed to be. Tank one has the iron and the calcium nitrate on it. It's got a yellow tint to it. Tank two 
It's more of a clear liquid with the other four fertilizers and a micro mix. And then tank three is a sulfuric acid mix to acidify the water. Everything looks good. All righty, folks, there you have it. That is how we mix our fertilizers to feed our hydroponic tomatoes. Now, if you're interested in following my recipe to feed your tomatoes, please keep in mind that everybody's source water is different. I get mine tested every few years to make sure I don't need to tweak my recipe. So you can't just use my recipe and hope that your tomatoes are gonna turn out perfect because everybody's source water is different. This is the recipe I was given by Crop King here in Ohio based on my water to best feed my tomatoes. Let me know now in the comments how you feed your tomatoes, whether they're hydroponic, high tunnel, grown in the soil, garden tomatoes. I'm always interested and curious how everybody else is feeding their tomatoes because I can always take away a little bit from other videos, other comments to do a better job in growing my own tomatoes. This is where we're going to end today's video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you again real soon down on the farm.